median home cost across the country, it, it's over $400,000, which, yeah. which prices out a lot of new home buyers. Young people don't want to stay forever in apartments. They want to have single family homes. What all the other builders in town are having problems with, which is subcontractors, uh, we self perform 70% of all our products. So we're also building for professionals, basically, or individual investors. We're really looking at what's the best thing to make our money go to work. So you can see how we looked at this exact engineered deal and why we would invest in it. All right, everybody, what's going on? This is another week, which means it's another wealth webinar. I've got some really amazing guests on. We're going to be bringing you some information about a brand new building technique that solves a lot of problems. But really how I want to tie this thing in is I want to basically talk to you a little bit about some of the things I look at and some of the things Brandon in my office, who's our, our in-house underwriter and also the person responsible for building out done for you. I want to show you some of the things we do when we're looking at a deal that we're looking to lend money to, how do we mitigate risk? What are the different risks that come along with being a private lender that you can mitigate? And I wanna show you literally how all of you can literally dissect a deal and eliminate a lot of the risks within a deal so that it fits your personal investing goals and needs or just your profile. Like every one of you, when you get into investing, Okay, I don't care if it's investing in Wall Street. If you work with a financial advisor, they the first meeting with any financial advisor is a suitability meeting where the advisor will go through and ask you a whole bunch of questions, time horizon, risk tolerances, you know, what is the money being used for? Where's the money coming from? Most of you have gone through this. And what they're trying to do is to figure out your needs, your goals, and your risk assessment is a roundabout way of saying it. They want to know what is a suitable investment for you by doing a suitability. But once you kind of move out of the Wall Street world and you move into the private world, the alternative world that we now live in, a lot of that due diligence is on all of you. And I will tell you this, one of the most important things when you're looking at investing any money is always invest in things that you know, things that you like, and things that you understand. Can you all repeat that real quick? I don't care even if you just chat in right now. Things that you know, things that you like, and things that you understand. If you invest only in things that you know, like, and understand, your risk in any investment will go down substantially. But yet I get people all the time that are investing in things that they have no knowledge about. They don't even know the first thing about it. I was just at a mastermind and one of the, the girls that I know in there, she had invested in this company about $125,000. And this company was creating a product Okay, you guys are going to laugh. And we kept hearing about this and, and she was like trying to promote it. This product was really fit for RV, like people that have RV parks or people that are just driving around in a camper and it gives them Wi-Fi signal. Now, hang on, because I know you all of you are like, yeah, that already exists. I get that with T-Mobile. I get that with Verizon. I get that with, you know, Sprint. They all have one of those. You just plug, you plug it in and boom, you got internet service. Well, this company reinvented it, but then the kicker came when she showed a picture of it. How many of you have ever seen a router with like little bunny ears? You know, like the really old ones that were big and they had like the two little antenna things. That was the picture of what this brand new investment that was gonna revolutionize internet signal for RV parks. And I'm, we're just like, oh my God. She clearly did not know, like, or understand the things she invested in because now she's invested in something that probably will not turn out to be a good investment but she blindly did it. And she said, this is the future. This is going to be a 9 million or whatever. She said, she's going to make like six or $9 million on her investment because of what they told her. Like, stop listening to other people tell you what your investment's going to do and start doing your own due diligence. And I think that's a lot of what we're going to do today. We're going to really show you how Gunter and Robert have engineered this deal. Okay, and how they've literally looked at all the risks that come along with that. And I want to also then chime in a lot because me and my team have looked at this deal for an investment purpose. And we've actually kind of looked at the different risks that we saw in the deal and helped Gunter to create this so that it does so that it mitigated as many of our risks. So, for example, if me or or Brandon or anybody on my team wanted to invest in it, we literally engineered the deal to be a deal that we would invest in. Now, that's for us, right? but we know, like, and understand real estate. 
And I know a lot of you on here do. So right now in the chat, how many of you know, like, and understand real estate? And, and specifically, let's talk about single family homes that are rented out. How many of you, how many of you know, like, and understand single family homes? Put yes in the chat right now, right? Most of you live in a home, right? So you understand what you live in. And also, if you look at the statistics, currently, right now, the trajectory, we covered this in WTF, says that in, in the next decade, all the single family homes that are out there in the US, about 40% of them will be owned by institutions. And not only that, Stephen showed another stat that showed how, how the future generation of, of homeowners, which won't be homeowners, are actually gonna be renters because they can't physically afford the housing stock. So think about those couple things. In the future, millennials, Gen Zs, Gen X, not so much Gen Xs, sorry, Gen Zs, Gen Ys will rent instead of buy. The new, you know, like the American dream used to be buying their own home, paying off your home. Many of you can relate to that. In the future, that will not be the goal. The goal will simply be to have a house over your head or a roof over your head, and that will be done in the form of renting. All the stats are already there. Steven, I don't know if you want to share any of that, if you have any of those stats that we did earlier, but it's pretty alarming. So given all of that, if you knew that most people in the future are going to rent, if you knew there was a massive demand from institutions to buy single family rentals, and you knew that the biggest problem with building is usually time constraints and building constraints because of either labor or materials, or there's just so many moving parts. What if you could mitigate all three of those things? You knew that people were going to be renting in the future. So create the stock so that they have a place to rent. Make sure that it's affordable. So find a way to build affordable homes. Find a way to make sure that the building of these homes can happen in a fraction of the time that a normal house takes to build. And then engineer how it can be the lowest risk. Like, for example, one of my favorite things, and I'll pick on Robin Nicole Fuller for a second. I've done a lot of lending to Robin Nicole for ROI properties. And one of the things I love is a lot of the things that I invest in with them are pre-sold. In other words, they've got land that they've developed and got ready so houses could be built on it. And then what they do is while that land is getting ready, they literally sell it to the DR Hortons of the world. They pre-sell it. So literally the land is already sold before it's even done, before the house is even beginning to be put on. So if I'm lending on a deal, on a project that is already pre-sold, doesn't that reduce my risk significantly? Absolutely. And then you just got to check the boxes for the rest. What is my, my, my risk profiles reduced because it's pre-sold because I'm a first lien position. And not only that, then you just got to say, okay, how long do I want my money out there working? Is it six months, 12 months, 24 months? Then you would say, okay, what are the other things? What is the return I want on my money? 12%, 15%. What is, what is your desired return on the money? So all of these things play into how you need to do your own due diligence. But what we're going to do today is, well, actually not me, but it's more Robert and Gunter. They're going to show you how they've literally looked at this entire landscape that we just went over how they've looked at the entire future of where real estate's going, how they tapped into the institutions that want these properties. Because, hey, listen, you can be a builder or a landlord, but it's hard to be both. Like if you're building houses, then you're also owning the houses. Sometimes that's, it's just hard. You, you get, you're doing too many things and your, your time gets spread pretty thin. So what if you could just be the builder, if that's what you're good at, and then you already had an institution that buys your properties from you when they're built at a prearranged price, and they contractually show that, that they've already sold the house, this is sounding pretty good, right? So if you know, like, and understand real estate, and then you know, like, and understand what's coming in real estate, which is more people need housing and they need to rent it. And then you just got to figure out, okay, who's buying these kind of rentals or building these rentals and put all the pieces together. It's a pretty freaking cool landscape. And that's what I like. I like low risk with good returns. Notice I didn't say high returns. I said good returns because I'm not chasing the big returns all the time. I will literally bunt and hit base hits for the rest of my life if the risk is lower. But I think a lot of people make the mistake. So this is just a recent Wall Street Journal analysis on, on renting and um, mortgage payments right now. So just kind of showing, you know, rents have gone up, but the cost of owning and, and having a mortgage are just sky high right now. So it's forcing because of the price of 
interest rates and the price of homes and everything that's gone up so high is just forcing people to rent and just driving that market up as well. But just shows that gap where most people, especially young people, are not even able to purchase homes right now. And and I don't see that trajectory changing. I mean, there was another article I saw, and I can't remember where it was, but it was it was talking about the institutions, the Black Rocks, Blackstones, the Vanguards, all just all the institutions out there. They're gobbling up as many of these single family homes as they can. You all remember during the pandemic, it was all over the news, you know, how many houses they were buying. I mean, real estate investors looking to flip a house or buy a rental, they couldn't even compete with the institutional buyers. That really hasn't changed too much. The only thing that's changed is interest rates went really high, which slowed the whole thing down. Does this make sense to everybody? Does it make sense that, you know, when we're looking at how we're going to make our money go to work for us? We want to fully control as much of the, the, you know, where that money's going. We want to control as much of it as we can. And we also 100% need to control the risk we want to take with a preferred investment. I love, uh, you know, Mark Perry said, uh, you know, the Fullers are his go-to uh, investing choice. Now, why, why do you think that would be? Do you think it would be because, probably because Mark got really familiar with the Fuller's business model, got really familiar with what they're doing, and then got comfortable with them. So it was, you know, he got comfortable with the deal. They got comfortable with what the, the future was and what they're building. But then he also built a relationship with them. Hence, he's got his go-to. So some of you on here, because right now we got 146 of you, you don't have a go-to. You're still looking for that. We created private money clubs so you could find those. But also now what we're doing is we're using this platform, the Wealth Webinar, to teach you not just about opportunities, but to teach you how an opportunity can be created by you, how you can literally create or engineer your own opportunity so that your money goes to work for you in a place that you are 100% comfortable lending on and 100% comfortable in the risks you're taking with this. No more should be the days of just throwing money at things and hoping and praying. That that literally should just be out of, out of your memory completely. You just forget about it. Like just throwing money in a stock. You're saying, oh, I hope it goes up. Throwing money in Bitcoin, but I don't even know what Bitcoin is. But the taxi driver and the Uber driver said it's going to be go to the moon. Like got to get rid of that. So that's why, you know, everybody here on this webinar today and, and everybody on my team, we've literally kind of taken what we would invest in and narrowed it down to things that we're just really familiar with. It's kind of like, you know, we just understand the landscape. We understand what we're doing. And, and that's what I'm trying to instill in each and every single one of you, all 150 of you. I'm trying to give you what we do, how we do it. And I'm even going to bring our underwriter on after Robert and Gunter go through, you know, the stuff that they're doing. So you can see how we looked at this exact engineered deal and what things we did or said needed to change to make it appeal to us. So with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to Gunter and I want him to kind of just talk a little bit about the deal and Robert as well. Robert, well, actually, first, do you two want to just give an explanation of who each of you are? Because I don't think many people on here know unless they met you at uh, Money Tank. Thank you, Chris. Let me still share a screen while Robert and I share who we are. I want uh, that everybody can, in the meantime, even read this slide. So welcome, everybody. I appreciate the attendance. I appreciate Robert, of course, but I really appreciate Chris Nogel. I met him about a year ago. We were able to meet each other on the same stage where we were, where we were both speaking in Chicago. I, have, I appreciate his team from the Money Tank. We all met again in, in August in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. I learned a lot. I met a lot of people. Just my quick, uh, um, what I did in the past, I'm, I started as a broker, real estate broker, fix and flip after the meltdown in 2008. Started multifamily investing back in 2017, syndication. And I'm together with another couple of large uh, syndicators. And then when 2020 hit, I realized I need to, I need to pivot. I need to do something else. Where's the money? Where are the people and my buyers? And what's happening on Wall Street in March 2020? So I decided start working on the West Coast. There was apparently no COVID. Nobody had a mask and people were going out. And I started buying land, single family lots, and started building single family homes. For three years down the road, they had many hiccups. I learned, I went through all the price increases, so all the challenges with labor, permitting, and everything. And I met Robert. Actually, in the very beginning, I maybe met each other exactly in 2020. And he's a real estate developer. 
why not you speak about yourself, Robert? How you doing, everybody? Thank you for being here. And um, I uh, I basically began my career in construction in back in 1986. And in the early 90s, I, I became a firefighter in the local fire department here and um, worked my way up to battalion chief before I retired in 04. But as I was working in the fire department, we were still doing construction uh, for many years. And when I retired, we got into real estate and we eventually became, we got into real estate development. We've done many projects over the years. And, um, and it's the struggles that, you know, came through 2008 that actually rehoned our business to, to the model that we have today, which is basically what all the other builders in town are having problems with, which is subcontractors. Uh, we self-perform 70% of all our products and um, we've developed things, uh, 45 acre development in Naples for Dip Benderson development. We've built a couple of hotels, um, a couple of mall areas for the site work development, site work development for 231 townhomes. Presently, we have 130,000 square foot warehouse facility with the 30,000 square foot office space inside of it under construction now. Slabs on, walls are going up now. That's projected into that is in, in July. And we're doing a couple other site work developments. We've worked in the past with with the HUD housing through the fall of the market, we built many homes for the municipalities. And that's where we kind of really honed our single family product down and, and made us keep looking for the right solution and the right time. And then of course, that's where we're at now and you'll hear more about it as we go through here. Thank you, Robert. Let me just show you a quick, uh, quick disclaimer. That's not a security, what we are doing, we are building homes. Let's get started here. So the, the most important thing that what I have learned from Chris and other investors is you need to ask yourself, what's the biggest problem today? And what are the biggest risks? And what, is, what do I do about risk mitigation? And that's what, you, uh, what we laid out here very clearly. And when you have any other questions, what you need to know from us, feel free to ask us. The first question is, how secure is my investment? And how long are I going to be in the game? So we limited this to one year. Then what about when the economy is collapsing tomorrow? What about the recession starts? Uh, what people predicting for the last two years already, there's going to be a market crash and it's going to look like 2008. What's going to happen then? And what about my, my cash flow? Maybe this I should say first, the most important thing is when I invest $100,000, what I'm getting back, I want to have my monthly payment. I want to have my monthly check. Let's say I'm not working anymore. Where's my money coming from when I invest it today? So after 30 days, construction starts. We really making our monthly payments to our investors for the duration of one year. And the next question I put there, when I have to get my money back? Yes, after one year, you get your money back. And the return already mentioned, the return, yes. So we are paying, basically, I want to say this up front, try to wait that everybody knows. The way we do the returns, we are paying a 15% annual return. The biggest thing is the biggest question when you go to Google or other places and find out the question is that about 83% of all investors, the biggest fear is I'm investing through my self-directed IRA account or any other means I have or my bank account. I invest, I invest my, my nest egg, my retirement money. What about I give you 100000 and then you lose it? What do I do? So we really tackled those questions. And then we want to discuss the challenges. What are the biggest challenges today in construction? And I can firsthand tell you, I built 12 houses and I'm still building. They're already two years under construction. And this was in Cape Cora. And why? Because of communication, because of uh, the, the quick rise or fast rise in, in materials, the delay, the shipping delays, the material delays, the cost of labor, where labor people don't show up to work, and bad quality. And then, of course, budget overruns. So all of a sudden, when, you, when you're when in a deal more than one year and the house is not finished, then it's a disaster and the investor's losing money. So let me tell you, I learned this firsthand. So now, and we are here to bring a solution to that. Number one is really the time delays. I don't want any more any time delay. When I tell my builder, hey, I want to build this house. I need to move in in six months. I cannot wait a year. By the way, I do a lot of research. I had like three or four different ways of building a house. 
with C panel structured, engineered uh, panels, all other things too. What's the fastest way? So I came to know a company which is called Brickless. They can build a house to completion in 90 days. Worst case scenario, 120 days. And I watched them. I met them earlier this year, just down the road from us, 40 miles. They're building right now 150 homes. About 100 homes already completed since um, since June, actually, when I saw those homes the first time. And um, I can show you later, we show you a video how these homes are being built. The first day is really building the slab and the foundation. On the second day, they are putting up forms. They are special aluminum forms. And on the third day, they are putting the concrete. Day number four, the house is basically finished. The shell is finished. So that's time delays. We are able, Robert and me, we are able now to build within 120 days, we can deliver the house. The labor costs, because we have our own subcontractors and other people, we are working hand in hand together where we can overcome any kind of uh, hiccups. So let's say one person doesn't show up to work, we replace that person with another person. We have quality control. Uh, Robert is the, the commercial contractor. He can build the homes and I do quality control. Basically, I'm the project manager running the entire operation. We are not building one house by one house. We are building five homes at the same time, minimizing the travel because all the five, every five or 10 homes we are building, they are within like less than a quarter mile. They are like uh, on the same block, on the same street or one street over. So we are moving from house to house in a very quick fashion. And regarding the overrun, as I already mentioned, we have a, a very, very complex system, but it's working very well. That means in the past, my experience is, uh, let's say tomorrow we need the windows, correct? So the windows are delayed because the factory is delayed or something else happened. I purchased windows one time in Texas and then the building collapsed and we had no windows. So you never know what happened, but we are buying all our materials up front and have them all lined up. The latest acquisition Robert did is that he was able with a friend of his, they purchased a window and door uh, a manufacturing company right in our area. That means we can order the windows, the doors, the garage, so we don't need to wait a month or two months to deliver materials. That's how we save time. And at the end, we are saving money and avoid um, delays. Let me show you this quick video, how, it's work, how it works. That's how we're building the one story homes. What you have seen is this, the one-story home, and there's another short video later. There's actually no sound. It's just, you see how it's being done. 
We are building one story homes. We're building the putting the foundation. We are putting the slab, and then we're putting up the framework, which are aluminium panels. We are putting them up in one day. That's how we built the entire shell and putting the concrete. Want to make it uh, just share with you the state of the economy, basically the state of real estate on the we on the southwest coast of uh, Florida. And this is just, we remember, we started with the COVID-19 in 2020, where people started moving down there. At that time, I followed the Google search and figured out, man, a lot of people moving to Central Florida in the West Coast. So that's why I decided to go over there and start working. Uh, and even today, so it's not just a pandemic where the migration trends started. They started earlier, but more so the last two years, actually. So about uh, 1,200 people moving every single day into our state. Our population neared already 30 million people in Florida. And among the, the top 10 cities where people are investing and want to live and work are five cities, which is Orlando, Sarasota, Tampa, Cape Coral, which is all there where we are on the West Coast, and of course, Miami. And this is the geographical area. When you look on the west side, you see um, in the middle, actually, is Port Charlotte, Charlotte County. That's where we work and live. On the right-hand side, you see Punta Gorda. Many people can fly in with a Legion Air today to Punta Gorda. And then you have Port Charlotte. On the very top of the, of the page, you see a round big circle. That's where we build our homes, which is just very close to downtown Port Charlotte. What's very important, we are not building a community per se. We are building on scattered lots. So there's no HOA and no restrictions. And these are all, all 11, 12,000 square feet lots, like quarter acre lots. And the other beauty to the is to the coast. From our area, we drive 20 or 30 minutes, and we have the most beautiful, quiet, clean beaches. We have no crime. We have barrier islands, and it's just great, the lifestyle. Um, why put Charlotte? This is the few reasons I mentioned to you. Already, uh, one of them is just actually in two days from today on Friday, Allegiant Air is going to open a Sun Seekers Resort. They worked four years on this with COVID interruptions, a $700 million resort with 800 rooms and 60,000 square feet of uh, conference center. And actually, uh, this was one of my ideas. Maybe, Chris, next year we, we can invite you and we can have a great meeting down here. You can use that link and look it up on the internet. So yeah, the cost nice of place. oh, it's really nice, man. And what we'll use whatever you look it on, look their website. Then Port Charlotte offers a very attractive cost of living for new residents, and and for everybody else too. By the way, our cost of living is a uh, seven percent lower than in many other places. Uh, Port Charlotte is ranked one of the best locations to live here. Our climate, and of course, you all know, and the reason why people move here and more and more corporations because we don't have state income tax. A medium, in the latest research from November, a typical bedroom, a three bedroom, two bathroom, about 1,500 square feet, the average sales by November were $399,000 in Charlotte County in general, but narrowed it down to Port Charlotte where we work. The medium prices, as you see on the in the middle, it's $360,000. And it's a little bit lower, like two percent lower than uh, the last over the last two years. The opportunity for the investors. That's why we all, this this is a two two ways. Number one is for yourself as an investor. You invest and you get your monthly your monthly paycheck. The other thing is what the uh, Chris mentioned early on. Then more and more people moving here, they want to build their rental portfolio. So we are also building for for, for professionals basically or um, or Wall Street, when they want three homes or four homes, down the road, we start building those homes for, for individual investors. Um, the cost of building, including our reserve, is $300,000 per home. Includes the licenses, the land acquisition, all the labor and materials, but we can del deliver this house in four months. And at the, what, the way we start doing this, we start building five homes at the same time. So we have all our lots prepared. They have, we have our environmental audit, our, our elevation certificate, and get start going. So right now we are raising a total of $1.5 million to build every four months five homes. 
and we can deliver them between 90 and 100 trays at, at a time. And on the bottom of the page, what are the terms? We're offering a 50% annual return, and we have monthly distributions, and we are starting 30 days from the start of construction. And the term is a one-year term. On the old, when people want to extend this or new people coming in, we're going to be open to two-year terms too. Yes, sir. Then please, can you share with them about Brickless, about the new technology, how we, yep. how we start building now, how it is being done? And what it really is, it's, it's really for the next generation. We really try to build energy efficient homes. And since we can build more homes at the time and more affordable homes, uh, we really feel like we, we're going to be able down the road, really making an impact in our communities. Yeah, ba basically, as Gunther has said, we've said multiple times about the speed of the construction, of course. Uh, that's that's the whole key to, to this project <clears throat> is getting the products out getting the subcontractors, it's key to have them on hand, as well as the materials and having everything pre-bought and pre-planned and be able to go. Um, in this scenario, the next thing up, you're going to see the video again, kind of like the first one, but basically to, to walk you through what you're going about to see is basically we go in, we clear the lot, we pour the slab, they form the walls. And by day two, I believe we're already pouring the walls <clears throat> and the speed is just, it's one set of construction guides that do this rather than having somebody to have to do slab we have to have, normally you have to have somebody to do the uh, concrete block or the two by four construction and and there's just too many layers of subcontractors involved whereas this is just all one it's kind of like the house itself it's all meshed it's all one piece things built like a like a bunker basically and it is a uh, very uh resistive to uh storm damage as well this is a two-story home for the model that you have here but it's still it's still the same concept on day one you have the slab and then the um the rebar goes in for the walls as well and some of the the you'll see here in a little bit here the um some of the packages the bathrooms and the kitchens are modularized and brought in already pre-built <coughs> which helps with the speed Anyway, but yes, the, see the walls going in. Now you see the floor joist here uh, for the second story. But on day three, that would be roof going on. Okay. Now they're on day four, they're putting the second floor on, and and then on day five, they'll be putting the pouring that one and then putting the roof on. But <clears throat> on the one-story version, on day four, the roof goes on, and uh, <clears throat> and then basically at that point, there's nothing left to do but frame it out get the electric in it, put the drywall on, because uh, the bathroom and the kitchens, they all come pre-plumbed as well. All we gotta do is a, is a main service hookup. That's just wild, it's almost like Legos. Yeah, yeah, well this, in this version you see here, we're not, we're not, we're not importing the rooms and the walls <clears throat> because what Gunther and I have done to, to more profitize more to make sure that we have higher profits on this is that we're self-performing all of the interior on the buildings as well okay. <coughs> excuse me and there's two versions that we'll build you'll see in some pictures later on one version has a flat roof and the other version has a standard hip roof like this one in between these these poured bunker walls and a and a metal roof <clears throat> especially the flat ones and the hurricane windows they're very they stand up to the storms very well yeah that that's an important thing i think a bunch of people are asking you know is it make the homes hurricane safe but because of the building structure uh more so than just a stick built and then um oh, yeah and it's 
more so than even a normal CBS block because this is a solid bore. It's just all one. It's like a bank vault, the whole thing. It's just crazy. And then, of course, then because then because of that, we have energy efficiency, and and the main deal is the, the strategy towards the build to rent, so we can get them done quickly, and get them under the price point, so then the big institutions can purchase them, and when they purchase them, they'll still have a little bit of upside on their end too as well. Our model allows us with the quick instead of having to spend 12 to 14 months building. Now, every two months, we can break ground on the next five. So now we keep the machine keeps going. So we have buying power with materials. We have buying power with our subcontractors, et cetera. This location earlier, this one that's circled right now, these are the first five. Um, when Gunter had, we had the map up of the whole town and he had showed the larger circle in the center. This is what circled around this. Uh, to the right there, you'll see, looks like they're doing development land. Currently, this is an old picture. The aerials aren't up to date, but that's a new a new community called Westport. There's seven major developers that, that built in there in the community, but it is a gated community. It's zero lot lines. They've put it there because it's in the center of town where everything is going, but we're building on the scattered lots next to it because when you're doing for rentals, it's not that great to be in an HOA. The flexibility is very low. So we do build on the scatter lots around it so the homes still maintain their value because they're near the larger developments, <clears throat> but they're more uh, more conducive to renting. And around that circle right there, uh, the first five homes will literally, I know Gunther said a quarter of a mile, but these first five, uh, four of the lots are all together back to back. And one of the other, the fifth one is only 80, 80 feet away. So literally we're in a, we're in a very tight cluster, which is also part of the construction model because I can have subcontractors who, who may show up to the property or my employees and, you know, come noon, they're done with the project. And they, instead of going to another one, they go home or these guys who just keep working. Like all five homes are treated as one large project, like a multifamily project. These are, these are the homes with the flat roofs. These ones here, the, these were designed in the, in the fashion of, of the hurricane in mind because um, of all the roof losses. This has a commercial TPO roof on it. And um, it, it does get damaged in storms, but definitely not like a shingle roof. And, and most of the damage that happens in the storms are usually from the neighbor's shingle roofs blowing into your windows and blowing your windows out. So if the whole neighborhood has flat roofs, we eliminate another aspect of the issues there. This is the one with the hip roof. It's the other model. It's the inside framing you see on the bottom. You can see on the bottom right hand corner, you can see the home is framed out, but then you look at the bathroom and it's completely finished. That's because that bathroom arrived and was craned in, uh, which is one of the other slower because then you got to have subs for your tile and your, you know, your plumbers and all that cabinetry. This is all just, it's just one big smooth transition. This slide I put in, Chris, like you said earlier, uh, all of a sudden the built to rent asset class is really being institutionalized and we're going to see this next year where all of a sudden other people jp morgan or other large investors going to knock on the door and say hey can you build us 100 doors and in the meantime some builders are just ramping up and just renting them out and see how the interest rates are going to go how the inflation is going to go and this is something for the end of 24 or maybe 2025 or 26 it all depends where we are headed and this is our last slide where, where Robert's going to tell you the reason why we are doing it and what are the, the key factors we just discussed the last 25 minutes. What we're building is, is in very high demand. Also being on the real estate side, we have a high shortage of inventory that's in this price range. Um, so not only the build the rent community side of it, the ones that aren't pre-sold, we also have the ability to, to sell them to an end user as well, if we so choose. Um, and basically we're, we're just, laser focused on the new cutting edge, you know, of the finished product of, of having this type of construction and, and it withstanding storms the way, it's, the way it does. The speed of construction with 190 to 120 days to completion couples with actually our ability there for the, um, for the quality of the product. The, the speed of construction with 90 to 120 days and the quality of the products is goes hand in hand because of the way we have our business model in our construction company. Like I said, we, we self-perform quite a bit of our own 
uh, products as so we have the ability to ensure the quality control because because we have most of the people under our employ we do not use subcontractors currently we're only using subcontractors for ac and plumbing we have our uh, we do site work uh, septic tanks we do the slabs we do the drywall in-house we do the framing in-house we have an electrical company that's in-house as well have our own electricians on hand and uh, most recently just acquired a door and window company that's been here in town over 40 years so we have um have, have acquired them what we did is we went after all of the trades that always give us the most problems and are delayed and backed up and um and it's electric doors and windows and concrete mostly i guess in the septic as well so we've assembled that entire group under our roof and so now we control them all and we have no delays and and uh, we're very confident that we may be able to even affect these in less than the 120 day average we're focused on the investors transparency transparency of course and um you know we're an open book as well as you know monthly distributors distributions at the 15 percent return again time frame as gunther said initially it's 12 months but we may expand into the 24 month section we feel like it's a win-win for everyone involved. yeah so i want to go into some questions here some really good questions that have been coming up you guys got a lot of interesting questions that popped up because of this construction method one of them is does this construction method reduce the cost of insurance since it, it is, like you said, being built almost like a bank vault, I mean, is the insurance going to be less for the end buyer? Uh, we, that's a that's an answer that we don't have yet, but the insurance is based upon your four point wind mitigation of your home and how secure it is. So I would bet that it, it, we're going to get one of the lowest ratings. I don't know that it's going to have a significant difference until maybe somebody till we get to some institutional insurance company and have them really come dissect it. It's a good question, Chris, for everybody to know. Uh, over the last six months, the insurance uh, bills, uh, invoices we received on other houses or sim similar homes, it's really monthly around $120 per month, which is actually lower than you pay on the East Coast, much lower. All right, we'll go to the next one. Glenn, Glenn this is a good question. What is the expected monthly rent based on the purchase price of three hundred thousand, or the build price of three hundred thousand? So like, the monthly the out... rent price on a three bedroom, two bathroom is average right now two thousand five hundred to two thousand eight hundred for fifteen hundred square feet, three bedroom, two bathrooms plus a two car garage. So twenty five to twenty eight hundred bucks, and I'm just putting this all on the board as we go here, folks. Uh, Katan, if I said that right, where do you get the pre-built modular sections like bathrooms and bedrooms? Is there any insulation installed? The insulation is going to be installed on site. I don't want to take this away from you, but I just remembered what we're going to do additionally. We're going to use some type of Aku foam. Uh, it costs maybe $1,000 or $2,000 more, but we can achieve a 50% a reduction in cost, in energy costs, creating this type of building envelope. And then uh, how much did you guys buy the vacant lots for? Well, pricing on that varies um, depending on on uh, customer and, 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 and area. Um, but the current ones that we're going to be using, we're paying an average of 20000 per lot. And that's wrapped into the total cost to build of 300000 right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so roughly 20K is land. So about 280 to build. Okay. And the lots are 80 times 125. 80 times 125 lot. Okay. <coughs> then we got, uh, yep, yeah, Mark, I'll, I'll cover that. I got Brandon who's going to go into the type of loan this is. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's promissory note, uh, mortgage, first lien mortgage. And then uh, Dana's last question was, why would, why would you need to go 24 month term with such a quick turnaround? And I think you guys just want, you're doing a 12 month offering, but you, you were gonna add a 24 month uh, just in case people wanted to go longer and go to the next round of houses. Cause this is just five houses out of the, how many did you say you're building total for the end buyer? 150? 
Yeah, we're building actually there are 115. That's correct. We're starting with 50. So the first phase is building 50 homes. Yeah. And we are, we start building five homes at a time. So Dana, they're doing it in like basically think of it as a tranche, right? They're they're raising for five homes at a time, so they're not getting too far ahead of themselves. But they've got a, a contract basically for 50 homes, right? Is it 50 or is it 150? 50. A contract for 50 homes that the end buyer, the institutional buyer, is already said, we will buy them when you build them. And they have a, a signed, notarized uh, LOI, letter of intent for that, which I'll have Brandon talk about. So that's that's the reason, Dana. It, it just gives people the ability to either go 12 or they could go longer. You know, some people don't want to do 12 months, which is, you know, like personal preference. They want their money working longer. Like Brent Kessler, for example, he won't do a 12. Well, he will, but he, he shies away from 12 month deals because he just wants to put his money out there, get paid interest and, and have that interest be paid for a longer period of time. If Brent was on here, I wouldn't be surprised if he took the whole damn thing down because 15 percent is a good rate. First secured position with that contract already signed by the end buyer. So it's technically a pre-sold deal. Um, so with that being said, anything else, Gunter, that you want to talk about on this? No, just any, when people have any special questions, it's fine. Um, when people want to visit us down the road in January, February, it's fine. I'm glad to introduce um, the entire area. There. It's just a great place to live. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. But what I, everybody, I want to introduce you to, uh, to Brandon. I'm gonna, once that's done, we'll get everybody up here on the screen. Um, Brandon, down in the right-hand corner, uh, he's been working with us, as, as you all probably can tell. This is, he's right down the hall in another studio. But um, Brandon is the one that underwrites anything that we or myself are going to lend on. Um, for example, I just did a, uh, I just did a syndication deal. I put a little bit of money at a syndication deal. I did an, another deal uh, for 50. We're looking at this deal. So what I wanted to have Brandon do is just take a couple seconds on how we kind of started with this deal with Gunter and, and Robert and, and the different things he's done. And Brandon, also tell them a little bit about your background and why you're qualified to kind of do the underwriting. So I'll pin you up and you can kind of just walk them through this deal, what you like, what you don't, and uh, what you've done so far. Thanks, Chris. Nice to meet everyone. Um, so a little bit about my background. I, uh, I come from the banking world. I um, have, I believe, eight years in um, larger banks, Bank of America and uh, M&T Bank here in Buffalo. And then... From there, I went to the credit union world. So I became a manager at a, a smaller credit union and went to something a little bit bigger and started running compliance, lending, um, and other aspects for um, for a credit union. So I have about 13 or 14 years of, of lending and banking experience um, that I'm bringing to the table. My first conversation with Gunther was kind of just digging into the deal. So what I was looking for was how secure is the the loan? So with the the fact that the the deal has been pre-sold essentially to a, a buyer um who who is looking to already buy all these 50 properties um in chunks of 5, that started that was the first step to alleviating any kind of risk that I was looking at, knowing that hey this that these things are going to be sold. Um I did ask Gunter and I um I hope I don't have this wrong. Uh, so if, Gunther, if you can correct me if I, I have this mistaken. If the next question I had for him was, what was the the plan for if the sale goes, like falls through? So Gunther informed me that what the plan was that he was gonna end up purchasing and buying them himself uh, and renting them himself. So he has, I believe he said 15 years of experience as a um, broker slash real estate, um, like a rental manager. So I wanted to make sure that there was a plan for if that deal does fall through. Um, and it appears he does have a, a, a general plan for um, if these properties are not sold to the, the end buyer. One of the other things I looked at was 
the market in the area. I asked Gunter to send over to some of the, the properties that are, on, that are for sale in the area that are comparable in size and build. Um, he did send over, I believe, three of them. And I did find them to be actually over what he estimated as the the end value of between 369 to 379. Um, so I saw properties that were in the area being sold for our, our, all the way up to about 400. And then with the fact that there was a 15% return, I, I thought that was, I thought a healthy return for something that was in a first lien position. Um, we are working with finalizing the exact verbiage in notes just to make sure the lenders are protected, um, but we're working on getting the notes and um, mortgages uh, finalized before investments can be made. Awesome. So you're kind of hearing it from a banker's side of it. And and it's kind of funny, like a lot of times when I first started working with Brandon, like the, the level of detail he would go into from the underwriting, I'm like, oh my God, this is never going to get done because it just takes time, right? It's like things are back and forth. How many times have you and Gunter been on calls or emailing back and forth about this deal? Almost daily for the last two weeks. <laughs> I'd say every other day for the last two weeks, maybe. <laughs> So like, I, I always consider myself blessed that we actually have, you know, somebody of, of Brandon's caliber here, an underwriter that can look at our deals and do that. And, you know, what's also cool is we then, after we look at a deal and we say, okay, yeah, we'll definitely, you know, do this deal. We then can train all of you on how we went through the process, which is with pur the purpose of today, or at least the first part of today's training was to kind of go through and explain that, explain how we did our due diligence. You know, again, Brandon's still working on the, the, the finalized note. Uh, we also now have in-house legal counsel. So that speeds things up for us. We can we can get legal documents from a borrower, have our attorney review them and get a turnaround within one day and then send it back over for changes. How many times have, have you done that with uh, Gunter? I think we've gone back and forth three or four times so far in the last week, week and a half. It's going back and forth between in-house counsel, having them look at what we added, uh, and then going back to Gunter and saying, okay, we need this change, and him sending it over to his title company to change, make the changes, or his attorney, uh, and back and forth. So, And the other thing I do want to add is uh, if someone is not, one of the things we looked at is if someone is not a, um, a full investor on one of those $300,000 properties, if you're doing only a partial, say $100,000, um, we are, there is a way in Florida that we we have figured out already to have everybody who's listed on the note as a first lien position. So you're not share you're not changing to a second third position if you're you're the second or third investor on the same property. Yeah, that's key. So real quick, folks, I'm just going to share my screen just because now that we have in house legal counsel, we actually have to do silly things like this. So Chris Noggle, Private Money Club and Money School does not endorse or recommend any third-party financial services or products presented in its webinars or live events. In some circumstances, Private Money Club will receive monetary compensation for these third parties in exchange for allowing them to market their services and products in our forums. Investments contain financial risk. You should evaluate any potential investments carefully, consult with qualified professionals such as attorneys, accountants, certified financial advisors, before making investment decisions. That is our disclaimer. I got that out of the way. So now check that box, just like Brandon was checking the boxes with this deal. Yep. First secured mortgage. Yep. Checks the box 12 months. Obviously there's a 24 month option. Yep. 15% interest, great interest rate. Uh, I think everybody on here can, can agree that 15% is a really good deal. The investment options into this are anywhere from a minimum of 50, which the reason, um, you know, when we were talking to Gunter about it, you know, they were talking, well, how, how should we offer it? And I said, well, any way you want, but just know if you offer it at a hundred thousand, because everybody always wants to come in and offer it at a hundred. I said, you're competing with Fuller's, you know, which have a track history and in, in a very well-known, uh, you know, on private money club. So by coming in at 50, you can, you can serve the entire audience, you know, where they can't get into to Fuller deals and serve at a higher interest rate than what they can get in Fuller's with still first secured. But the, the cool part is, and we barely talked about this, but I, I, I mean, I've seen the document and I've actually even talked to the, the acting CFO of the company that's buying these properties. So they actually have a signed letter of, of intent. I guess that's what you call it, right, Brandon? Is it letter of intent? Yeah, yeah, it's a letter of intent. Okay, signed letter of intent from the end buyer for, well, it's technically the, the letter of intent's these five, but it's for 50. So for 50, yeah. Yeah, so for, yeah, sorry, you, you've seen it more than I have, for 50 homes. So 
this end institutional buyer has agreed to buy 50 homes from Robert and Gunter, you know, of which five of them are being offered right now. And this deal is not on Private Money Club yet because I wanted to kind of train and teach everybody on this deal in Wealth Webinar because I just thought it was a cool case study. You know, we're, we're really looking at what's the best thing to make our money go to work and what deals work for, you know, different investors. I'm just kind of talking to you how this deal fits our box, you know, here at, at Money School and me personally and why we would invest in it. And I just thought that was cool to be able to show it firsthand how Brandon and, and our team has literally looked at a deal from start to finish. It's taken a while. Gunter's been incredibly patient, so patient that Robert got sick physically sick of waiting for us to get this damn thing done. Just picking on you there, Robert. Um, and I, that's joking, but uh, you know, we, we just, we just don't move quick, you know, but now we're in the final stage. Once we get the final promissory note in the final um, mortgage back, we're ready to rock with this thing. So if, and actually somebody was asking accredited investors only, this is the beauty. No, you do not have to be an accredited investor for this because it's direct to the deal. You're lending direct to the deal. It's not a syndication. It's not a reg D. It's not a reg A. It's you're just you're just a lender, like lending to on any real estate deal that you want, which makes this really nice. That's a good question, Mark. What is the time frame to invest? I don't know. Um, how long are you guys doing the the open raise for? It's a good question. We do it. The reason why because I'm really the reason why I was sneaking in this slide about the institutional investors, all of a sudden they're surfacing. I don't know why or how it happened, but apparently there is a huge window of opportunity next year and some people are ramping up. There's a lot of equity on the sidelines. And there's, I just came from a very large investors meeting with my family office. And I realized there's these people waiting to put their money I don't know what it is. There's just, I'm not an analyst at all. Uh, there's some people say it's an election year and things are going to be very quiet. Many people I met uh, think like you, Chris, what you are sharing with everybody where you see everything going and giving us some hints next year and the year after. I What I have learned myself from my mentors, like Tony Robbins, for example, he would say when there's a crisis, when there's uncertainty in the market and nobody knows what to do, then we have, and I don't want to go there, we have this weird political situation. We have this geopolitical stuff, stuff going on. When there's something really not sure what's really going to happen, even Wall Street doesn't know what to do. I believe, I know one thing, out of the underlying economy, the underlying facts. There's six and a half more million people moving into this country over the last two years, people need to live somewhere. They're not going to live in tents forever. And, uh, and and the natural growth of population, people need a place. And Florida is, and Texas are the ways to go for the time being. And, uh, and, everybody, and I believe, I, my wife and I, we raised five kids. I believe every young couple needs a place to live, right? And and people want to have houses versus apartments. So I'm a multifamily syndicator and I read all my reports. And now people are saying uh, people don't really want to, the young people don't want to stay forever in apartments. They want to have single family homes. And many of the investors on the call today know that wherever you go, you pay at least $400,000. Do you have the down payment when you're 25? Give a down payment to buy a house for four hundred thousand. So, so I think when Robin and me can bring a product to the market which is really energy efficient, that's another chapter I want to discuss in another point. I can build today a net zero energy home when I can bring this to the market that you do not need to pay your two hundred dollar FPNL bill in Florida, and I have a better product, even if it's a little bit smaller, maybe but it's the value is going to grow. And after every downturn, look at 2008. I mean, the house has doubled, right? Gunter, one other thing we didn't really hit on that I think is, is worthy is, you know, when you look at the median home cost across the country, it, it's over $400,000, which, yeah. which prices out a lot of new home buyers. I yeah. mean, let's be real. I mean, especially with new banking regs, 
and all the the stringent banking underwriting that they're doing, a lot of people are just priced out of homes. So yes, right. then they could rent from the end buyer of these homes, but by them building it this way, by them only having to take 90 to 120 days to complete a house, I, I can't even fathom that. Just imagine like you see a vacant lot, you see a pad poured, and then, you know, 90 days later, there's a house completed. Like I, I can't even fathom what that would look like, but you know, it'd, it'd be like you're driving to work one day, the next day you drive by and the house is, is built. That, that'd be it. But it significantly reduces the cost. So they're building these houses for 300 grand. And then I don't know, what, what is your end buyer buying them for? Is it 369, 359? I, know I mean, they're... an end buyer now, since the prices is really weird, but they're going up again. Now it's the season in Florida. People are coming down. People who live in Buffalo, they're freezing and they're flying down to Florida today. Oh, it's not that cold here yet. You bunch of wimps that live in Florida. Stephen won't even come up here in the wintertime. He's like, it's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm saying is um, the price is going to go up and I wouldn't be surprised when the houses we are building today in June, when the interest rates may be going down an inch, maybe they start selling it 400,000. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And, and to the point what Brandon said earlier, I'm glad actually to hold on to the houses because in two years from today, I do a build to rent. When you cannot buy my house for 100,000, I already discussed this with Robert. And we are renting it out. And when the buyer, the renter likes it, then we do a build to rent. So that means, I mean, rent to buy, that's what I'm saying. So they can rent and they don't have the money. So I don't need the down payment. I only need a small down payment. And I get monthly payments in my IRA account and have tax-free income. So you can, we can, I mean, slice the cat many times over. What are we going to do at the end of the day? Yeah. Stephen, what are you, what's your take on this? You live down in Florida. So like, what are your thoughts? I mean, a house that they can build for 300 grand current values, 369 ish, you know, like what are your thoughts on something like this? Yeah. I mean, I haven't had a chance to, to dive into the numbers, but it, it's definitely cool technology. And um, I mean, building a house that quick is just amazing. And, you know, like you guys said, if you have the end buyers in place and, and that's ready to roll it, it's cool, man. It's also, so it's also okay. important important to point out that in that 300,000 number is is the 15% interest as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah, this this bakes in the interest hold carry cost too. Yeah. That's a really plus, good plus point. It, it has some reserves in there as well. So I think it was about 20%. Yeah, it's 20 20 about 22. I think it was like 23%, but it was a little over 20%. So, so we're, actually, it, we're actually building it for around 280. So you can see folks like a lot of thoughts gone into this deal. You know, a lot of uh definitely hard work has gone into this and just thought it'd be cool to bring it to all of you. So if any of you had interest in jumping on it, lending on this deal, um, it's available to you. And if any of you are interested, all you do is you email Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N at chrisnoggle.com. And the reason we're doing it that way is, well, Gunter doesn't have a fancy funnel. Uh, that's all. There's no fancy link. So we just said, Hey, listen, anyone that's interested, we'll have them email Brandon. Brandon will take all the emails and the, the, your information and pass it on to Gunter. And then you guys can continue the conversation. And also it'll give us a gauge on, you know, like if you do email Brandon, make sure you give us your name, your email and your phone number, but also just a roundabout idea of like how much you'd be looking to lend on this deal. Because obviously it's only $1.5 million. Now I know when you're thinking about it, that sounds like a lot, but $1.5 million Knowing some of the names of the people on here, that's one person. So, you know, the, if you sit on this one, it's not going to be there. If I tell Brent Kessler about this in the afternoon, it, it's game over probably for almost all of you. But, you know, I'm, I'm joking about that. So just just know that when you email Brandon at chrisnoggle.com, give Brandon your name, your number, your email, and also just – and it can be a range. I'm thinking 50 to 100. I'm thinking 100 to 200. Whatever your range is, just let us know. So that we don't like send over a whole bunch of people and a bunch of people are excited about lending on it, but then all of a sudden it's reached its max and there's no more rooms because it'll go very quick. I mean, you guys can do the math. That's not a lot of people and it just takes one or two people coming in at a big amount. And then the I, I also need it, your address and your, if it's been, uh, if you're investing through a, a self-directed IRA or how you're lending uh, through yeah, an entity, so so the name of the entity, I just need that as well. So source of funds, address, Email address, phone number, first name, last name, 
did, did everybody enjoy that process of walking through how to how to mitigate risk in a deal? And literally, we did this very different than I've ever done it before. We did it with the builder on the line, also the person who's kind of organizing the deal, and in, you know what what would have been when Brandon was in banking and underwriter. So you literally got to see many different sides of how this deal looks. So, so I I thought it was pretty interesting, and I thought hopefully you guys could all learn from that. Sure. I see in the chat room one person is asking for solar. Yes, this is another thing what I do. We will be at solar in the year after, not on these homes right now, but we are working already towards the, in the direction to create a net zero uh, energy home. But yes, you can, anybody can put the solar technology onto the, on the roofs of those homes. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to kick this into the next phase of this. We've only got a couple minutes, but I, I think I can kind of wrap this up um, in that, you know, seeing as though we do a lot of lending and all the lending deals that I do are either done from one of two sources. I either lend from, you know, mine and my wife's self-directed IRA or, well, now I, I lend from the business trust, but primarily from my banking policies, my specially designed and engineered whole life policies. And it just so happened um, that the other day, I got one of my my statements. Now we don't we don't use New York Life. Okay, I want to be clear. This is this is my policy, but I started this policy in 2014. I was a financial advisor. I at that time I was just getting like introduced into infinite banking, but I had this policy set up then. I bought it really solely for the death benefit, which is 229,533. So this is not an infinite banking designed policy like we would do for any of you. This is just a standard off the shelf, whole life insurance policy that I wish I could say my broke ass brother-in-law sold me, but I myself sold this to myself while I was an advisor. But I wanted to kind of talk through this really quick for all of you, because this thing is in its ninth year. It's ninth year. I just got this and, and I wanna here, I'm gonna go to a different screen here because I, I just want you guys to realize why the wealthiest families and banks use whole life, not IULs, not universal life, not VULs. Why whole life is what they use. Now, and then again, knowing that these numbers aren't going to be nearly as good as what we would design for you today. But I thought this is, listen, if I can show you the worst case scenario ever, a policy that we would, no one on my team would ever even talk to you about because we would never design it like this. This is 100% to base. So let me just give you the numbers. So this is a New York life, whole life policy that I put $6,466 a year. I actually do it monthly. It works out to be 570. And I know if some of you have been around the campfire, I've talked about this policy. It was like my, my third whole life that I did. This is how much money I did a month. This is a year. Okay. So we all can, we can look at that. Now, I just want to read some of the things off of this right now. My death benefit has gone from, I started it at 200,000. It is now 229,533. A lot of people are like, oh, well, when you buy a whole life and you take loans, you're, you're not gonna have any money that you give to your family. This is a standard whole life. The, the IBC policies we do are way better, but think about that. It went from 200 to 229,000 organic growth. But here's the best part. My net cash value, okay, in this policy is $56,070.56. Okay, so those are the stats. But all I want you to focus on is how much money I'm putting into it. I'm putting $6,466. Now, Brandon, since you're good at this, if you can just do some math for me. It says right down here at the bottom, during the past year, your base plan, base plan, no paid up additions, folks. None of that good stuff in this one. Your base plan guaranteed, I'm going to say that again, guaranteed. Cash value increased 6,406. So my guaranteed growth of just here, this is just the interest rate. My guaranteed interest rate growth was $6,406, okay? That's just the interest. I put in 6,466. My guaranteed growth was 6,406. But remember I said we only use mutually owned dividend paying whole life insurance policies. This is a dividend paying whole life insurance policy. So my dividend was right here. In addition to the increase, your annual dividend was $1,644.69. So 
Brandon, if you did the math, what is my guaranteed interest, 6406 plus my dividend? Okay, my dividend was 1644. How much did this thing, how much did I make on this? 8050. Thank you. Yeah, that common core math skills are kicking in there. Just kidding. So my policy grew by $8,050.69. Now, Stephen, I'm going to give you a shot at this. Okay, what is $8,050.69 minus $6,466? I want my net, net growth. It's $1,584.69. $1,584.69. Now, can you divide $1,584.69 into my premium of $6,466? What was my cash on cash return on this stupid, as Dave Ramsey would say, foolish, terrible whole life policy? 24.5, yeah. Okay, so folks, let me just ask you this. If this is a standard off the shelf whole life policy in its ninth year, now, this policy sucked in the early years. It was no cash value year one, very little year two. So again, it's nothing like what we do, but how many of you would love to earn 24.5% on your money? Most of it being guaranteed, 6,406 of the total 8,000 guaranteed. Is anyone upset when they make 24%? Anyone? And you know what the best part about this policy is? In every single policy that we do for you know over 8,000 people now, Next year, guess what will happen? Can anyone tell me what that number is going to be next year? It's going to be more. Anyone else want to tell me how much it'll be the year after that? More. And the year after that? More. Every year for the rest of my life, the policy will earn more. It won't be 24 next year. It'll be 25. Wow. And next year after that, it might be 27. And then it just keeps going north. You see, but if this was the ninth year in an IBC policy, we'd probably be double or hell, maybe even triple that number but this is just a normal whole life. Plus my death benefit keeps going up. And you know what the very best part about this policy is? You all like 24%, you see what it grew at. How much money do you think is left in this policy? Like how much money do you, or let me say that again. How much money do you think I have loaned out of this policy? Steven, how much do you think I have loaned out from this policy? All of it. All of it. All of the money in this policy is out working. And some of it's at the Fuller's earning 13%. Some of it's in a Chris Rude deal right now that I'm getting 12% on. It's it's out there. It's, it's buying cars. It's investing in, in deals. It's lending money to people like Gunter and Robert. It's, it's out working. But the best part is, is because of the way that whole life works, all of my money continues to grow. This return is, that's the net return even though the money's out working for me, making money a second time. So am I really just making 24.5% cash on cash? No, I'm making 24.5 plus 12 plus 15, whatever the return is on the money out there working. I, I just, this wasn't really part of the plan, but folks, I just thought this would be cool to show you. And why did I not show you my IBC policies? Well, because if I show you the absolute worst possible outcome, what happens when I show you one of the best outcomes? What happens when one of our team members does your plan design and does it properly and your returns are double or triple what I just showed you? Are you upset or are you happy that I showed you a 24% return on a base standard whole life with no paid up additions? Which means the advisor, myself, got a nice old 55% commission. Yep, these are those ones Dave Ramsey always talks about that the agent gets paid that big old rip commission so my commission on that 6,466 was 55%, not bad. If Steven were to do this exact policy for me today, do it with one of the plan designs we do, his commission would be reduced by 75%. So you would just reduce that commission 75%. That's how this works, folks. One person has to give so another person gets. And I just thought that was a really good sum up for today, because a lot of you do have policies. A lot of you, I saw in the comments, you, you, you're in underwriting or you're just about to get it get it going. Like if you got this policy and, and it's just convenient that I have, well, there's $56,000 in cash value. So let's pretend it's not lent out. After seeing a presentation like Gunter and Roberts, where do you think I'd want 50,000 of that money going? Do you think into that deal, earning 15% first lien position pr on a pre-sold project? Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad place for 50 grand to go to work, right? So I'm just trying to show you like whether it's a self-directed IRA, a policy, 
or a bank, you know, maybe you got money sitting in the bank earning three to 5% right now. Maybe it's time to get that money working for you or even better. Maybe some of you have a standard off the shelf 401k plan, 457 plan, TSP. Maybe you got your retirement funds there. You're getting a little worried because we're at the top of the market probably soon to go down. I mean, everything points down. Maybe you want to get that money out of the 401k and you want to get that money working at 15%, but you don't want to take the money out of the 401k because then you're taxed and penalized pre-59 and a half. So why not take a loan from your 401k? Send that money out to work for Gunter. So here, ch check this out. Let, let's just do the math. Let's say you had a 401k. Somebody mentioned this in the chat, which is why it's top of mind for me. You can take 50,000 or 50%. So let's just do 50,000. Let's say you took a loan for 50,000 from your 401k. Guess what has to happen? 50,000 has to come out of the stock market in order for a loan to happen. So where are you gonna sell? If you, if you sell a position inside your 401k, 457 or any retirement account, are you selling low or are you selling high? Can anyone say it in the chat? Low or high? High, right? You're selling at one of the highest points the market's ever been at. Make That makes no sense, but we're selling at the high point. So you get 50 grand out of the market and your gains are locked in. You then lend that money out. Let's just use this deal at 15%. How much interest is your 401k going to charge you? I don't know. It's going to be a range, but let's shoot high. Let's say it's 9%. Okay. Let's say it's 9%. So if they're going to charge you nine and you're making 15 you're making 6%, right? Did anyone find the mathematical error? How much interest are you actually making? This would be your spread. You make 15 from Gunter's deal. They pay every single month. So every month, a check comes back to you from that 401k loan. But you see, the interest that the 401k is gonna charge you is, I, I went high at 9%. You guys all can call and ask what your interest rate is. Did I make 6% or did I make more? The 401k loan is going to charge me nine. Gunter's going to pay me 15. How much did I make? Is it 15 minus nine? Or did I trick you folks? Because it's not 6%. I didn't make 6%. I made 15% lending the money plus the 9%. Rick nailed it. This 9% that's being charged in interest on the 401k loan, who gets that interest? I do if it's my 401k. When you take a loan from your 401k, the interest charged is interest that goes back into your 401k. So when you borrow from your 401k, you're not just making 15, you're making the 15 from their deal plus the interest or whatever they're charging you on your 401k. It's a combination of the two. How do you like those apples? Steven likes them. All right, what, qu yeah, eat it up, Steven. Even it All right, what, what questions do we got? Let's hit some questions. I know we're a couple minutes over. Uh, yeah, we can run through the Q&A. So what yeah, are the top three companies we use? One America, that's probably number one. Lafayette Life is a close second, which is owned by Western Southern. You can look both of those companies up. Giant, mutually owned, dividend paying life insurance companies. We also use Guardian, Security Mutual. And in the past, before Mass Mutual said that they don't support IBC, we also used Mass Mutual. But those are those are more than three. Uh, Chris, when you sold yourself that policy, pretend it was the broke gas brother-in-law, how would that person tell you about cash value and what that means? Oh, great question. So Shauna, back in the day when I was an advisor selling whole life or convincing myself to buy a whole life in this case, it wasn't about the early cash value. I would look at 10, 15, 20 years and I would say, holy cow, look at all the cash value that I have. And if something happened to me, look at the death benefit that I have. So it was first, I, I would be buying a death benefit. 200,000 was the death benefit on this. And secondarily, and, and how do you know I was buying a death benefit? Anytime you see a policy that is a set amount, like if you look on this first page, my uh, death benefit, where is it? It's called, the, here we go. The base plan death benefit right here. The base plan death benefit was $200,000. So when I bought this policy, I literally just said, I'm going to buy $200,000 worth of death benefit. Hence, how it came out to be $570.21, which is a weird monthly premium, because I wasn't building the policy we, the way we build them today. I was building it for the death benefit, 200 k And I was like, okay, well, in the future, I'll have a bunch of cash value. That'll be good. But I wasn't, I wasn't able to use the cash value early on. And every policy that I sold while I was a financial advisor was always in the future. 
usually supplemental retirement planning. Sometimes it was, uh, you know, hey, yeah, here was a big sales thing. Hey, I'm going to put money into this whole life and I'm going to get a $200,000 death benefit. Awesome. Oh, and by the way, in 10 years from now, I'm going to get all my money back because I got enough cash value that's paid me every penny back that I paid in for the death benefit. Follow what I'm saying? So that's how I always did it, Sean. A great question. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So vaping is considered smoking, yes. Um, would you recommend using a 401k loan to initially fund a BYOB policy? Mm, not usually. You could, but the money would have to go from the 401k into the policy and then immediately out into a deal like this deal you just saw. Because obviously you got a drag of nine, whatever your 401k loan interest is, that's that's money that's got to be paid back every single pay period. It's going to come right out of your paycheck. So it, you know if you're not looking for your paycheck to go down, you got to have that money out there working. So usually I just tell people with 401ks, have that money just go to work directly. It's It's more efficient. I mean, there are reasons if you need death benefit or you're really playing the long game, you could go to the policy first and then then lend from the policy. But I, I think it could work either way. I always just tell people go 401k direct to the deal. Yeah, let's look at that. I mean, the market's at all time high, so it's never a bad time, in my opinion, to pull 50 grand out of there and get it out of the markets. But um, but yeah, going direct might make more sense. What was the insurance names? Okay, so One America, which is... American United Life, a company called Lafayette Life Insurance Company, which is the Western and Southern Group, Securities Mutual Life, and Guardian Life would be the four primary companies we use. Okay. All right, that's all the Q and A's I see. Oh, two, whoa, holy cow, coming in in the final hour. We're gonna cut it all off. Right, and then we'll stop the IBC stuff, guys. If you have anything else for Gunter or Robert, let's get that and then um, we're already going long here, but we do have an ask me anything at 4.30 p.m. So less than two hours, you can join us on the YouTube page or Facebook. And we spend a whole hour just doing question and answer with our entire team. So join us then if you have any other questions about IBC. But with Mass Mutual not supporting IBC, will there be any issues with future loans? No, David, no problems. Just no new policies with them. Dana said, what about doing cash out refi to start policy number two? I have a lot of equity in my rental home that's just sitting there. Yeah, you totally, you definitely could do that. Um, but again, you'd, you'd need to get that money out working for you, Dana. You know, that's the number one thing. It, the, the policies are never going to make you wealthy. You know, they're going to preserve and protect your principal and your, and your capital and, and grow at a decent rate. I know some of you are looking at 24%, but remember that's nine years it took me to get to that. So, you know, the, the name of the game is the infinite banking concept. It's the process that we teach, not just the policy. So if you were to do that, cash out, take the money, put it into the policy, we want to try to find a way to get that money out working for you as quickly as possible so it starts earning a return. And then you can take the return and put it back into the policy. It's always the, the, the process that you're really focused on, not so much just the product. But with that being said, uh, Gunter, Robert, thank you so much. Robert, I hope you feel better. I know what it's like being sick. I feel like I've been sick more than I've been healthy the last quarter of this year. It sucks. So, you know, take care, get well, and uh, have a Merry Christmas if I don't talk to you before then. Thank you very much. And for any of you that were new here for the first time, thanks for sticking it out. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Wealth Webinar. I hope you learned something. This was kind of experimental for us. We're really excited about it. And you'll be hearing more about this deal, or maybe you won't. Maybe it'll be totally gone and filled by tomorrow. But uh, we'll also probably see this deal on Private Money Club um, if it's not filled up. So stay tuned. Get your profile and get your account set up on privatemoneyclub.com. And we will see a lot of you this afternoon at 4.30 Eastern for the happy hour. Ask me anything. Thanks for joining. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them. But I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you want to know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button. Actually, smash that alert button and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.